Welcome to Metaphysical Soul Speak. I'm your host, Elena Fox Starks. Hey guys, I hope that you're doing really well in this moment in this new year of 2020. And I hope that in this moment in time, whenever and wherever you are, when you listen to this recording, that you are not going to add a bunch of things on your resolution list and you're not jumping feet first or (laughs) worse, head first, headlong into the massive changes you might have planned for yourself. Now, next week, I'm going to see what I can do about getting together a resolution show about how to make and keep realistic resolutions. And as I say that, a fairy appeared in my room. Hey, guys, I feel them with me. It's so cool. <coughs> um, so basically, what I'm talking about is if you haven't exercised in three years and you want to change everything and you start by buying a thousand dollars worth of clothes and you're paying a hundred dollars a month for the best gym in, in town, a hundred dollars a month. And so you have all this expense and then you go gung ho the first three or four days. And then suddenly you get injured and now you're out for a month and now you just lost a month's worth of money and time and expense. And, and, and so that's not the way to go about it. And most of you know that, and some of you know that, but, but some of you are going to be like, ah, well, screw that. I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> and you do that at your own peril. And when you jump head first into like a brand new diet plan and you didn't think, oh man, you know, this, this uh, plan gives me diarrhea, which means I kind of can't go to work now. (laughs) Or if I go to work, I'm in the bathroom and I'm probably getting fired. You know, so what I'm trying to say is if you're not used to eating vegetables and you haven't seen anything green in your fridge in a very long time, unless it was mold on cheese, (laughs) and you decide to go vegetarian out of nowhere, that's not a good idea. What's good is just adding little bits of vegetables here and there. And eventually deleting the carbs from your life and adding the vegetables to your life, taking out the bread, adding in the lettuce, you know, adding in the celery. You want to really ease into it, put cream cheese on the celery or peanut butter. (laughs) You know, it's actually keto cream cheese and peanut butter, both. But you want to, do everything you can in your power to ease yourself into it slowly. Go into this slowly. Um, you know, if it's uh, gaining shape or losing weight, you know, you just don't want to be like going from a 3,000 calorie a day diet to like 500, you know. You're going to hurt yourself if you do, if you jump head first into something, you jump head first into a pool, you might get a concussion or worse. And so I think it's easier for us to keep our resolutions if we ease into it gradually and slowly. Um, My resolution was to get the show out by six o'clock California time did not happen today. Uh, Oh my God. I've been working on the show now for seven and a half hours. I had more problems again with the editing software directly on anchor.fm on the internet. Um, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's me. Is it the equipment? Is it me? Oh, you know, uh, I added a 30 minute introduction, but when I started to do the introduction, I messed up after like a minute and a half and I stopped it. And then I did a 30 minute introduction and I deleted the one and a half minute one flub up. When I deleted that one, the 30 minute introduction also somehow mysteriously got deleted as well. So I then did not know it was deleted and I went ahead and I did the last two parts of the show. (laughs) 
So it's just like it mysteriously deleted itself uh, twice. And this is the third introduction for today <laughs> that I'm doing. I have no idea if it's going to even work or not be deleted or whatever. I mean, it took two hours for the unicorn section to process, which is the third part of the show. And, uh, you know, it's not a surprise because you've seen the uh, title before you clicked, right? So, <laughs> and yeah, I channeled the unicorn collective. So cool. I can't believe it. I totally didn't even believe in the existence of unicorns up until maybe about a week ago. I mean, I wanted to believe. I hoped it was real, but I mean, it just didn't seem real, and that's why I had to do that show. Because <laughs> I kept getting uh, the messages from the unicorns. It kept coming to me. It kept coming to me. But, um, yeah, it's cool. They're real. It's so awesome. You're going to love the channel. It's strange because I'm not used to communicating with unicorns. <laughs> they, commute different, they communicate differently than bipedals, and they have a different idea and perspective and a different energy completely. It felt very foreign to talk to them. So, <laughs> I don't know. It's so weird. I hope that you, um, hope that you like it. I've decided to make a weekly world weather news report <laughs> instead of doing uh, the news every day. I'll do it on Fridays and then we could pray about who needs help, healing and prayers and love sent their way. But last year I did in, in season one, I did talk about how I actually channeled God and I believe he said something about like a third of the population of earth, a third of the people are, are going to opt out and they're going to opt for not going to the fifth dimension. They're going to just die to us. It appears if they died and to them, they might think that they fixed the floods and got out of the fires and they might be moved over to an earth like planet. And they might not even, it's identical to this one, they might not even know that they died from our world. To them, we might be the ones that appear dead. I don't know. I honestly don't know how it's going to play out. And and even if I thought I knew, how would I even prove it? You know what I mean? Like, there's no way. But from our perspective, the way we're looking at it right now, I mean, it looks extremely dire for a lot of people around the world. And... There's not much we can do except pray and send them love and, and, and positive vibe energy. That's it. People that are in drought, we can send them information and plans to make the wind sails that will capture the moisture so they can grow food and drink water. You know, we're going to have to pay or send money, uh, you know, or I'm not saying money, but I mean send food, you know, pay to send food. If we know for a fact that they will get it, you know, we could donate to charities for those people. For Australia, I don't even know what the hell to do for them. Except to send our love. I, I do say a prayer in the next section of the show. You know, about that, I, I just, my heart goes out to all the people around the world that are suffering one way or the other, whether they're too hot or too cold or battling typhoons or floods or fires. Or trying to escape volcanoes going off. Or if they moved to a dormant volcano and found out, oh no, it's not an extinct or dormant volcano. <laughs> it's waking up. I was starting to think about that today. I was like, you know, I do live on the Ring of Fire and I am 70 miles away from that volcano. It's still going off. I saw a bunch of ash in the air today. And then, the, and then the wind shifts and the ash goes away. And it's like, oh, thank God. But I've been, like, coughing stuff out of my lungs since that volcano started going off. It's like, oh, my God. I love the energy of it. It's such a beautiful volcano. It is so incredible. It's so incredible. Um, 
Let's see here. I want to get into uh, the Schumann Resonance right now. Get you guys prepared so you could go into the next two sections of the show. Um, <clears throat> you know, tomorrow is my first official day off for a weekend. I don't even know what I'm going to do. My son and I talked about going to the spa. We also talked about doing some big shopping and we were going to do the little shopping a day. And we went out today and did the massive shopping. <laughs> I spent $200 on food. And I mean, just food, like, but staples, like stuff that we needed. I went to my friend's house over the weekend or not, not even a week. I'm sorry, over New Year's. And I left my oregano and my rosemary and my basil and my olive oil and my black pepper. And oh my God, I was so annoyed that I did that. <laughs> and I, and I, I'm just going to let them keep all of it. I didn't even mention it to them. They, and, and I even left a pepper. I was going to make something for breakfast because we were spending the night there. I was going to chop up the pepper in some eggs. They said they had eggs, so I brought the pepper. This huge, it's like, um, it looks like a super hot pepper, but it's actually the bell peppers in Ecuador are long and skinnier than bell peppers in the U.S. They're very strange looking, and they're so good. We have bell peppers here too, but this is a different, different species, but it tastes exactly the same. Same, you know, they're red and they're, they have green and red. And oh, they're amazing. Anyway, I love the food here. Love the vegetables and fruits here. I just feel so good when I eat them. <laughs> if you're a fruit or a vegetable, living on another planet and there's no people, please don't be afraid. I'm not going to go to your planet and eat you. <laughs> I hope you guys heard that story about the, the vegetable people. <laughs> I don't even remember what day that was that I had talked about that. This woman I know had a dream about it. She she was like, "Oh, I'm a vegetarian." <laughs> they were terrified. She went to a planet full of vegetable people. And that just came up. Somebody else had a memory of maybe possibly living in a world where he was a vegetable like that. Like, instead of being a human shape, he's shaped like a vegetable walking around with, you know, eyes and, you know, I guess my mouth and, you know, strange. But you're a vegetable instead of, it's, I don't know. Sometimes I swear to God uh, that God actually does acid, but we know he does. <laughs> God is a psychedelic God, man. Obviously, he does acid. He created acid. <laughs> And we all have a, 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 a lock in our brain for acid. You take the right key, which is a tab of acid, and it's going to unlock it, and then you're going to see things. But it's not for the faint-minded or the weak of heart. Um, I don't know. It's my favorite drug, but I don't do it very often. Maybe once a year, every year and a half to two years. Never more than that. <clears throat> I've been thinking about it a lot, though. I'm like, I'm overdue over to. So, Shimon Resonance News today, uh, they had a 17-hour blackout on Disclosure News on IT. Their site just was not working at all, but when it did come back online, they got a whomping 10 hertz frequency. Not a whole lot, man. That's, that's nothing. And I'll prove it's nothing by going over to this other website. <laughs> HeartMath Institute at HeartMath.org. They report California. Start off at midnight at 56 hertz frequency. And by 5 a.m., they were up to 57. Not a big change. And two cities were just flatlining it at zero hertz frequency. No activity whatsoever. Northland, New Zealand, as well as Hofuf, Saudi Arabia. Absolute zero. Um, <laughs> no hertz frequency to speak of. However, in Lithuania, they started off at 99 hertz frequency at midnight, and at 5 a.m., they were at 103 hertz frequency. So that's pretty substantial. That's pretty good. In Alberta, Canada, they started off at midnight at 14 hertz frequency and went straight on down to zero. So by 5 a.m., we had three cities at zero around the world. And in Hulului, South Africa, boy, they've been on a steady incline. They started off at midnight at 426 
hertz frequency on the Schumann resonance scale. And they went all the way up to 467 hertz frequency at 5 a.m. And it shows no signs of stopping, so there you go. In uh, A Course in Miracles today, we're on Lesson 204. You can find this uh, Foundation for Inner Peace. Their website is acim.org, which of course stands for A Course in Miracles. Or you could just download an ACIM app. There's many, many, many of them. They're all free. Uh, lesson 204. The main idea of running through this this uh, uh, series of review lessons is this. I am not a body. I am free. For I am still as God created me. And the main thought for today is taken from lesson 184. And this is the main idea. The name of God is my inherit inheritance. The name of God is my inheritance. God's name reminds me that I am his son, not slave to time, unbound by laws which rule the world of sick illusions, free in God forever and forever, one with him. I am not a body. I am free, for I am still as God created me. So there you go. Um, that's it for the introduction. I've got it over here too. Okay, so that's it for the introduction. I'm going to take a quick break. And when I come back, I'm going to talk about the world news as far as the earth changes. So it's like the, it's going to be the weekly world weather news. <laughs> it's just basically the earth changes, all the different things going on, like the floods, the droughts, the fires, the floods, the, the volcanoes, the earthquakes. I even had an earthquake this morning. <laughs> You know, the, the snow, the, all the records, they're being broken right now around the world as we raise our vibration and go up into the fifth dimension and as the third dimensional world breaks up and falls away, we're watching it happen. But we're going to watch it. It's interesting. We all came here at this exciting time on planet Earth to be a part of this really, really momentous occasion <laughs> and to watch it all. And you know what? We could do it while eating popcorn if we're in a safe place, <laughs> but not before we pray for everybody who's suffering first. So with that, I'm going to be right back after this message. And then we're going to get on into the weekly world weather news report. And after that, we're going to channel the Unicorn Collective. <laughs> it's going to be an interesting one, guys. So you might want to grab popcorn for this one. Wanted to say hello, by the way, to Nikki in Paris, France. She sent me a friend request on Facebook. Just look me up, Elena Fox Starks. Right now, my personal square is black. You could also look me up at Metaphysical Soul Speak on Facebook. Um, Instagram is Mermaid Girl 888, as well as my Twitter is also Mermaid Girl 888. Um, Nikki sent me a message from Mother Earth Gaia. I'm going to try to read it on Monday uh, if it's uh, something I haven't already read. I don't think it is, though. I think it's a new channeling about the fires in Australia. And I thought that was funny because I thought it was my friend in California, Nicole. I don't know if she goes by Nikki, but hi to Nicole as well. She's been writing me lately. And she asked me to do a group prayer. So I did that today at 2 o'clock, um, about 12 hours ago now. But I'm going to do another prayer. So anyone who listens to this anytime in the future, we're all going to be consistently praying for Australia. 
um, as well as the rest of the world. I mean, Jakarta needs our prayers, Philippines needs our prayers, India and Bangladesh. Um, you'll hear all about it right after this message. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's high time you did. It is the absolute easiest way to make a podcast. First of all, it's absolutely free. Second of all, they have creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. You guys have known that I've been doing this for eight months using the Anchor.fm app right on my cell phone, and I have done it everywhere, right? I have recorded this in my living room, my bedroom, little cafes in Quito, Ecuador, all over Cuenca. It's so absolutely easy to make your podcast and editing is just a snap. Anchor also will distribute your podcast for you. And it took me about two and a half months to become syndicated. And now I'm available on Spotify, Apple podcast, and many more and so can you you can make money from your podcast also and there's no minimum requirement you get paid from your very first listener it is everything that you need to make a podcast all in one place so please if you are interested in making a podcast of your very own do not hesitate to start with anchor Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Metaphysical Soul Speak is run on sponsors and listener support. This means listeners like you. If you are so inclined to support my efforts and my little podcast, please visit me at anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical and pledge an amount of your choosing today. Thank you. All right, guys. So I had told you guys a bunch of news in that brilliant 28 minute recording I did on New Year's Eve that got lost <laughs> so I don't remember when was the last time I gave you um, world news and I feel like maybe it's a little bit depressing to do world news every single day and during the week you have so much other things to think about usually if you're commuting and you have a lot of, of work to do um, if you have a job or a career. So I'm thinking that I might do a weekly world news wrap up on Fridays from now on for 2020 for the new year, the new decade, maybe once a week we'll have the news and then we will have a prayer to pray for all the people that need it. So maybe we'll do that. Okay. So, or vision, you know, we'll try to do something and then we'll feel like, okay, this is, this is it. So what we need to do, right? We're light workers. We're enlightened or at least awake. (laughs) So there we go. Now, I don't know if I told you about the eruption in Russia of a volcano. It started on the 29th and it went, the aviation color code remains at orange, they said. I don't know what that means, but I'm assuming red is the worst out of all of the colors. <laughs> um, so anyway, in Russia, Klyuchevskoy, and I believe I might see, I don't know if I told you guys this or not. So on the 29th of December, that shot ashed 20,000 feet or six kilometers up into the air. And Anak Krakatoa, erupted in Indonesia and let's see (sighs) 
All right. So basically, they it's shoving ash into the air at 10,000 feet in Indonesia. I'm like trying to read this. I'm like phreato magmatic activity in the Indonesian Anak Krakatoa volcano has increased over the past couple of days. So I think they're worried because you know they had like a major tsunami there. They had a major eruption. Last year, it, 426 people died. There, there, and 30,000 people were injured last year. Like, I don't mean last year, last year, but two years ago, or a year ago, last, you know, this past December. So, like 13 months ago. So, they're really worried, right? So, that spewing, and the one in Russia is the spewing, it's ash in there. Now, on the 30th, they said that the fires were being sparked by dry lightning in Australia in East Gippsland. So that's like nuts. That's like what happened in um, Northern California years ago when I lived there before the big fire in paradise, like a couple years before. And actually a long time ago, my, my kids were a lot younger and that was crazy. I mean, dry lightning, that means Clouds that have lightning in them or whatever, they're very electrically charged, but don't have moisture and they don't rain. There's no rain and it's just like lightning. And that's when, when I got hit by lightning in 2007. So now I know when it was <laughs> almost 13 years ago. So there was like, yeah, I was like, that was the lightning storm. That was like the beginning of the lightning storm. It struck me. <laughs> and, and then and then all the, and then those clouds went north and they hit Redding and I mean I don't know where there's like a thousand fires out of nowhere in California and that's what happened in East Gippsland Australia the same thing this dry lightning phenomenon now what's weird about that is I've gone my whole life and up until 13 years ago I never heard of this stuff I also never heard of thunder snow only thunderstorms where it's raining and there's thunder, but about 13 to 15 years ago, suddenly there was snow with thunder in it, like a, like a rainstorm, but it's snowing or freezing rain um, or hail that not didn't fall straight down or slightly to an angle, but I mean almost completely sideways, almost completely parallel to the ground. And also when there's fires, the fire natives, there's a lot of stuff that never happened when I was a kid. It just is normal-ish now. I mean, I think we're freaking far from normal, to be honest. But <laughs> Now, in Chiang Rai, Thailand, there was a severe hell storm, and it triggered blackouts, and several homes were damaged in three districts of Thailand's north province of Chiang Rai. On Saturday, that was the 28th. The storm also led to traffic after trees were knocked down along, um, I want to say the Chiang, probably along the moat, if this is the one that's near Chiang, Chiang Mai. I do want to live there so bad someday. So let's see. Um, okay, they were they were knocked down along the Chiang Sian Chiang Rai Road from Tambon Chanchawa in Mei Chan District to Tambon Wiang Chiang Sain Chiang Sain District. Okay, I'm saying it wrong. It's not Ch it's Cheng. So Cheng Sain Sain of Cheng Sain District. Ugh. According to the provincial officials, the storm which struck Mei Sai in Cheng Sain and Mei Chan districts. The, the storm lasted 30 minutes. And I mean, I'm looking at these pictures and it's like a blanket of snow. Um, yeah, it's just crazy. I mean, I'm looking at this. It looks, it, it's like, and there's trees downed everywhere. So I remember do, reading the story, but I think that was on New Year's Eve. And I just, it's like I would make the show and it would just disappear. Or I would make the show and it would, it would appear and I would wait an hour for it to process. And then once it was done processing, it would just be like, no sound. It's crazy. I don't know why, but it's what was going on. And that's what's going on. 
So、um, in Delhi, India, they had the coldest December day. It was the coldest December since 1901, and in some reports, it was as cold as 2.8 degrees Celsius or 37 degrees Fahrenheit. I mean, they're like five degrees away from freezing, and now. When you think that Delhi in India they don't have heaters, why would they? It's hot there all the time, day and night. It's warm in the night and hot in the day. And people that even own homes are having to take shelter in shelters. They can't. It's like they're too cold at night. That's so cold. Thirty-seven degrees. That's freaking cold. It's crazy. There were flash floods in Colombia and mudslides in Tolima, and eight people at least were missing after a heavy downpour triggered the flash floods and the mudslides. So the disaster struck、um, on the 26th of December、It、wasn't reported on the watchers until the 31st of December, though. So that's another flash flood thing, and, and that's happening all over the world right now. Either fires or flash floods or droughts. Typhoon Fan Phone, otherwise known as Ursula, now has claimed、uh, 50 lives in the Philippines. 2.1 million people have been affected, and 20 million dollars worth of farm products have been wiped out.、Uh, 143 people are injured, and five people are still missing. The storm wiped out. Just everything, like the farms and the, the everything. I'm looking at the pictures there, and it looks like a flash flood. It's you know this huge typhoon. Now, so there's that. Let's see.、Um, there's something about the solar orbiter, or, orbiter, orbiter <laughs> for NASA. They're going to take views of the sun's unexplored polar regions in the high latitudes. So they're getting ready to launch this from Cape Canaveral on February 6th, and it's a joint ESA and NASA mission. What's ESA? Is that Elon Musk? I don't know. That is NASA and ESA. I don't know where ESA comes from. It's weird. But the Solar Orbiter will be、uh, exploring the sun. I think it's important we get up close glimpses because this has been a really crazy solar minimum. There's been nothing. Last week there was like one solar wind and there hasn't been anything. I haven't checked it today, so maybe there was.、Uh, but this has been nuts, like for real. There's been、um, no sunspots, no flares, no CMEs, no nothing. And our sun is one of the stars that has the potential of doing a mini supernova. And the scientists are trying to figure out what are the symptoms of that before it happens. I don't think it'll wipe out life on Earth, but they're talking about. They're like, you know, it is possible, and it's possible that it had these kind of activities before. So they're. I'm glad they're going to send something up there to study it. I think it's important. So. In Jakarta, massive floods after an exceptionally heavy rainfall、uh, killed seven, forty-seven people, and left millions without power. And the de- the deaths were a result of hypothermia and electric shocks, as well as landslides. Tens of thousands of people had to evacuate. And、that's in Jakarta, Indonesia. So that's pretty crazy. So Yellowstone's steamboat geyser has, in the past year, this just past year, we just came out of smashed previous record of eruptions for a one calendar year. So that's pretty cool, <laughs> I guess. Also, it's a little scary. There's more geyser activity. <laughs> I mean, that's next to that super volcano up in Yellowstone. So, 
I don't even know. Um, in Jakarta, they were expecting, uh, yesterday, they were expecting more rainfall. They said it was going to be extreme, and so they decided to use their weather modification technology to combat the floods. I mean, that's... A, why did they not use it before it hit them the first time? I don't know. It's kind of crazy, right? But basically, they're going to try to make it rain before it hits the big cities. So they're going to force the clouds to rain early <laughs> using their weather modification technology. Crazy stuff. So in Bangladesh, this one's really crazy. 50 people were killed. 283,000 people were affected by different cold-related diseases because of a cold wave that swept through. Health officials, officials have to advise people to start wearing warm clothes in the mornings and evenings. I mean, that's pretty nuts, right? So Bangladesh, I thought in Bangladesh, they were kind of in the mountains and they knew better. They knew to wear warm clothes. But let me see. I'm going to go to this article and see what else it has to say. Uh, it said, unless it's an emergency, children and, and aged people should not go out. Oh, my gosh. So uh, they were the temperature there was recorded in Chaundanga district at 46 degrees Fahrenheit. And then a week later, it was 40 degrees Fahrenheit. This is a northern um, border town in Bangladesh, Tutulia. They have dense fog in the mornings, and it's been disrupting traffic commun communication by road, waterways, and air. I don't know if they meant to say commutation if, or communication there. Um, people that have low income are, are affected because they have lack of proper clothes. Children and elderly are more prone to diseases, to diseases, can't even say that right now, as pneumonia. Um, hospitals have been crowded with people suffering from cold-related illness, dehydration, pneumonia, and influenza. Yeah, when you're cold, you don't feel like drinking cold water, so you become dehydrated. So people are getting rotavirus, and 33 people have died from that. And 17 died of acute respiratory infections. This is in Bangladesh. 3,000 people are in the hospital with treatments because there's no shortage of medicine on their supplies, thank God, though. So, yeah, so 3,000 people because of the cold are in the hospital now. In Bangladesh. It's weird that people's weather has gone haywire all over it gets worse I'm sorry about that guys we're gonna say some words about it at the end here okay an intense outbreak of polar stratospheric clouds have been seen around the Arctic Circle they are beautiful they're created with ice crystals in the upper atmosphere and they're like so beautiful they're like pink and purple and orange and they're just incredible so it's almost like northern lights, but during the day. So you might want to go check that out. Go look for um, a video on YouTube about this. So apparently on Christmas Day, we had another asteroid fly past us. <laughs> 76 last year flew past us, and they seemed to not notice until it was too late that they had blown past. Oh, oops, look what we missed. 76 times. That's 76 times too many in my book. The Russians are going to have a moon base to try to discover <laughs> the asteroids before they get her. I'm upset that it's going to be a nuclear-powered moon base. I hope they fix that part of it, but not a bad plan overall, though. To go up there and look for, uh, <laughs> to go look up, look constantly. They've got to look constantly for these asteroids. They're going so fast. 
I don't think we're going to get hit by one, though. So, there was a weekly volcano report that came out on the watches, if you want to read it. Um, they, they didn't report all of the volcanoes. They said there were 12 volcanoes. Uh, new activity and unrest was reported for four volcanoes. And then ongoing activity reported for 12 volcanoes. But what they did not mention in this article is that the San Gay volcano in Ecuador is still going off. I know that I just saw, had ash in the air again today. That uh, one is continuously erupting. And they didn't even put it in their weekly volcanic activity report. Don't forget about little old Ecuador because I love it here. <laughs> it's a good country. People forget about this country because it's so small compared to the rest of all the countries in South America. So this is, this one's really strange. And by the way, um, tomorrow we're going to have the Quatrantid meteor showers. So the moon will be prominent in the evening sky, but it'll set around midnight. And after that, you're going to be able to see the meteors. It's probably going on now if you go outside, but I would I venture a guess to say tomorrow would be the best time to see it. Maybe go out both days just so you don't miss it in case one night you have a cloud, cloud cover. Or you can watch it on YouTube and you know sip your hot cocoa from your lounge chair and put a little blanket across your lap if you want. <laughs> I like doing that activity, but on top of a hood of a car being outside in nature looking looking at the stars it's one of my favorite things now this article scared the crap out of me I didn't read it I was saving it for you guys so we could ex- discover it together so they're saying that an extinct volcano is by definition a dead volcano which has not erupted in the last 10,000 years that is expected never, ever to erupt again. So extinct means no magma, no seismic or degassing activities. And they don't expect it will ever erupt again in a comparable time scale of the future. But here's some examples of, um, <laughs> this is why this is scaring me. A volcano in Russia may be active again. Scientists are worried it can have catastrophic consequences. Iceland fears dormant volcano may be waking up. Previously extinct volcano raised to eruption warning level in Colombia. An eruption would be the first in recorded history. Dormant volcanoes from around the world are coming to life for the first time in 160,000 years. Fourth dormant volcano shows earthquake on the west coast at Mammoth Mountain, California. Oh my God. That's crazy. And it says, more importantly, unrest is growing right now among some of the world's super volcanoes like Laguna del Mal in Chile and Italy's Campi Fieri under the city of Naples or Napoli. Since 2005, Campi Fieri, now they're saying Flegri, Flegri, I think they spelled wrong wrong the first time, so it's Campi Flegri, has been undergoing what volcanologists call an uplift. Oh my God. Now they say uh, Campi Flegri may be nearing a critical pressure point necessary to drive an eruption for the first time in 500 years, according to scientists. So the pace of ground deformation and the low-level seismic activity recently increased, and they are similar to two other active volcanoes, Robaul in Papua New Guinea and Sierra Negra in the Galapagos. Oh my God, another one here in Ecuador. Both showed an acceleration in ground deformation before eruption with a pattern similar to that observed at Campi Flegrier. That's what an Italian geophysicist said. So basically they're saying uh, enormous volcano rumbling below Naples. 
That's uh, the name of the article. And the second biggest land supervolcano, Toba, in Indonesia, is now showing signs of a possible eruption. In the North Sumatra district in Sita Lauma, they are in a state of panic because the ground beneath their, phone, their homes is becoming hot. It's emitting steam that smells like sulfur and gas. I'm like, get your ass out of there, dude. Like, oh my God. The other Sumatran volcano that seems to be waking up after 170 years of quiet is um, Sulawa Agam. And the alert level was raised in another Indonesian volcano. Um, so, okay, yeah, so that's the same one. Sorry, Suala Agam. Uh, that's the name of the article. The other Indonesian volcano, which is very active at the present time, is Sinabung. And before 2010, Mount Sinabung had been dormant. So I don't know, guys. I mean, on and on it goes. If you want to read the rest of this article, um, you know, they're not mentioning the super volcano in the U.S., I'm looking though. <laughs> um, there is a volcano in the Congo. Um, it's becoming active again after the 2002 eruption that killed 147 people and forced 400,000 people to flee to the nearby city of Goma. So, there you go. If you want to read the rest of it, it's pretty, it's a longish article. It's not bad. It'll take you about 10 minutes to get through it, but that's crazy, right? A crazy, crazy stuff. I was like, oh my God. And by the way, guys, I woke up to a 4.9 earthquake this morning, about 9.19 or so, <laughs> you know, just, just before 9.20. I, I had this weird sense that I woke up and I'm like, huh, I have a feeling it's early. And then all of a sudden I heard like a rumbling. Next thing I know, we're having a, a, an earthquake. It wasn't too bad because it was on the coast in um, Puerto Bolivar in Del Oro, uh, Ecuador. But it was weird. My son did the same thing. He said he woke up. He had a sense that something was about to happen. And then all of a sudden he heard the rumbling that, you know, we have earthquake hearing. Not everyone can hear earthquakes. But we could. Then we both heard it, and then we both were like, whoa, and then there was my kid. I have a feeling it's a foreshock, but then when I looked it up, there has been three 4.9 earthquakes in the same exact area in the past 30 days. One in the last 24 hours, and one in the past seven days. Besides that, and then one in the past 30 days. So it's it looks like a foreshock. You know, it goes and then 30 days later it goes again and then a week later it goes again. It seems like it's getting... So if in two or three days we have another earthquake, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to prepare for a much bigger one. I mean, I'm far away from there. It's not going to hurt us, but we do have some cracks in our building. So <laughs> my son and I decided to keep it in mind. Let's see here. Uh... There's also a level, uh, the level alert has been raised up for Kirishamayama Volcano, also known as Shin Modake Volcano in Japan. It was raised from a level one to a level two. It's a near crater warning. They're urging residents and tourists to refrain from approaching the crater. I think it's a good idea and practice to never again approach another crater, just, you know, period. So Norway, Norway has recorded the warmest day ever in January. It's a heat wave in Norway, 66.2 degrees Fahrenheit, 19 degrees Celsius, according to the Meteor Meteorological Institute in, Nor in, in Norway, the Norwegian Meteorological Institute. Ugh, I said that wrong. So really crazy, right? So UTC time, 8 in the morning, is when the Quatron did, Quatron did, meteor shower will be peaking. So 8 o'clock UTC time, January 4th. Um, so I think it's going to be fun. I think you guys are going to have fun if you go out and look at that. I'm going to look for 
meteors as well, although they might not be in the southern hemisphere. Um, and again, another ash cloud being shot into the air from Alaska, 24,000 feet into the air. That beats my local one here in San Gay, which only shot out ash 20,000 feet <laughs> above sea level. So 20 to 24,000 feet above sea level is how fast or how high the ash is rising in Alaska. I have a feeling we're going to have the sun blocked out for a few minutes. <laughs> It just feels like it. The level of seismicity has increased in Alaska um, in the past 24 hours. Now, this is the big story of the night. And this one, guys, we, we need to really uh, say a prayer for Australia. Okay. Um, this one is bad. 22 people have died. 15 million acres have burned. 2,500 buildings have been lost. There is an extreme fire weather warning in Australia. The Navy had to pick up people as they ran for the beach, and it got so hot that with their little children, they got into the water, and they had to be rescued from the ocean because they didn't want to be on the land anymore. It is so hot, and it's, it's just so much fire, and it's out of control, and they don't know really what to do about it half a billion animals have been killed a third of the local koala popu population they believe that that means from now on the, the the koalas are extinct they don't breed very much they don't breed very fast and i don't know if they're gonna be able to save them in one generation to two generations from now the koalas might be gone uh strong dry northwesterly winds caused ongoing fires to just keep going and flare up new ones and that's it five thousand or five million nine hundred thousand hectares or 15 million acres have been burned already in a in, in australia did i say alaska i meant australia um these are huge i mean it's changing the weather patterns you could see i mean the smoke is four million eight hundred thousand It cut me off. Darn it. So I don't know how much of that you got. We're going to go over this again, just in case. Sorry about that. If I, I, cause I have to wait. Otherwise I have to wait an hour until it's all loaded up technology. So yeah, Australia is bad. A 22 people have died. 2,500 buildings are lost. 15 million acres are on fire right now. The extreme fire weather warning in Australia. It's just no signs of stopping. This was reported today. Half a billion animals have been killed. A third of the local koala bear population are, are gone. They're all lost. 1,400 homes have burned. Um, 2,500 buildings in total, including the homes. 20 people are still missing in the state of Victoria. And uh, it's so... The smoke from this fire is so wide, it's bigger than, for example, the United States, Canada, or China, according to Watchers.News. This is uh, what Antti Leponen, a physicist and research scientist at the Finnish Meteorological Institute, said today. Uh, he says that the area of the smoke of the bushfires is 12,400,000 uh, kilometers across, or 4,800,000 miles across. This is huge. This huge. I mean, the United States is only three. Is it three thousand miles across? <laughs> I mean, this is four million eight hundred thousand miles. It's squared. It said. I don't know what that means, but exactly. But I mean, the temperatures were 104 degrees in southern Australia. 104. That's hot. And it's just getting worse. Um, they're saying an approaching cold front could generate areas of raised dust. 
So they don't know what to do. This is the beginning of their summer, guys, the beginning. So I don't know. I think that we should pray for Australia. We should pray for the whole world. I mean, just because they haven't reported it lately doesn't mean that the droughts are not going on in Africa still. So um, I'd like to just do a quick little non-religious meditation. So we're going to ask um, Mother Earth Gaia, you are our friend. Please help there to be rain in Australia. Please help the people of Africa who don't have rain. And please release the rain and lift it up off the people who are having flash floods and overwhelming amounts of rain and the, the extreme weather where, you know, like Indonesia, Jakarta and Thailand. Um, please help the places that don't have water to have water. Please help the places that have too much water to have less rain and more sun. Please help the people in the drought areas to have food. And if for whatever reason, this is God's will that all of this happens and that people are going to move on to the next world and come back and be born again when the fifth dimension is already in place, then allow them peace and comfort while they go through that. While they go through their transitions, allow it to be easy and smooth and help them to be comforted. Send um, the fairy folk or whoever to um, go and comfort people. And God, I'd like to ask you, or Divine Creator, whoever you want to use for God, you can say this. Um, Divine Creator, please help us to understand what's going on. If this is in your divine will for all this to happen, and if it is not, please help balance the earth quickly. We're looking for balance. All the cold places that are supposed to be cold that are super hot and all the hot places that are normally hot are now super cold. Please bring balance to the world. And if, if, you're, uh, ex if the extreme weather is what's bringing balance to the world, so be it, but allow the people to be comforted and allow the animals to be comforted and allow the plants to be comforted because there's a lot of plant spirits. They'll be dying as well. Um, but most of all, we, we ask that a lot of rain gets sent to Australia. And that's all I gotta say about that. So amen for that. All right, so I'm gonna take a couple deep breaths, guys, because I'm already connected to the Unicorn Collective and I don't know what they're gonna talk about. <laughs> I've never channeled them before. I have no idea what they're gonna sound like. I'm gonna try to match their energy so that I can hear them better. Am I connected to the Unicorn Collective? Muscle testing says yes. I don't know what you want to talk about, but go ahead and tell us what you need to tell us. If you have any messages for us. Oh, okay. I'm trying to ban I'm trying to like get this guy's. Uh, as you know, I am an indirect telepathic channel. I don't let them take over my body, but I'm trying to match their vibration right now. You're saying. We are, okay. We are the Unicorn Collective. They're kind of talking in a very high-pitched voice. I'm going to try to match what they're doing so that I can match their vibration. We are the Unicorn Collective, and we want to let you know that we feel your love. Many of you love the unicorns, and we appreciate that you love our race. Yes, we are real. They're talking to me directly now. We are real. We lived many, 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 many moons ago, as you say in your world, but in reality, more like millions of years, tens of thousands of years ago, we decided to leave. So because they're saying that they're millions of years old, but tens of thousands of years ago, they started to leave and go ahead. And we decided to explore other worlds and galaxies. Do you, so I guess you guys have spaceships? No, we don't have spaceships. We travel energetically because we can travel at whim by creating a very high vibration 
leaving the dimension we're at and then dropping down into the dimension of our choice. We were on your planet, which is why you have it in your consciousness that we are real and exist because we are and we do. We were in your world in the fifth dimension and we left it because of all the problems we had with the energy getting lower and lower that we were not interested in. And also a lot of people tried to start, they started to hunt us. So we were not interested in sticking around for that. Who can blame us? We are very much aware of the presence of individuals in your world in all of your lands in every continent that have a great deal of love for us and we wanted to express that we love you back we are energy pure energy beings and then when we coalesce and move into a lower dimension by becoming solid we tend to be um energetically high in vibration but we can be solid like you guys uh, on the fifth dimensional level or above. So we can coalesce a physical body when we need to. And this is why many of the artwork you see today is surrounded by rainbow energy. And we've seen your jokes. We don't find them too funny. We don't poop rainbows. But we would like to let you know that the energy of the rainbow around us is a clue as to how we are able to magically travel from one place to another. It's not really magic. It is high vibratory physics, but we appear when we are surrounded by rainbows or rainbows appear around us when we coalesce our bodies into a space into a place and it's a high vibrational rate and we use fractalized light to travel we can't really explain it to you in these moments of time but our purpose of being there when we were there in the days of Atlantis we wanted to let you know that we wanted to be a part of the grand experiment of peace. We wanted to be part of the age of enlightenment, which is kind of what people saw and thought about when they were part of Atlantis. And it was wonderful. It was a wonderful, magical experience. And we were there with our cousins, the Pegasus, which is the horse with wings. Another thing that you have long since thought of as being mythological and not at all true. And there were also mermaids and there were a lot of beings and creatures that you now think are don't exist, can't exist, never did exist. There's no way they were real. They're just myths and fantasies made of the minds of people with really intense imaginations. But we're here to tell you that and we don't mean to be rude, but you people aren't all that imaginative and the, the things that you think are from the imagination are things that actually used to really truly exist. And we love it when little children come up with ideas in their minds and there's rainbow unicorn and unicorn imagery all over your planet, everywhere you look these days, because guess what? We're coming back and we want to let you know we're coming back. And we are so excited and pleased to tell you this wonderful and exciting news. We hope that you will receive us, our energy and our love um, with open arms and that you will not try to haunt us. But we are happy to know after having observed you from afar and a distance that you don't really hunt your horses. And we do know that some of you eat horses. We are aware, unfortunately, of the dog food factories. And that does upset us because... Obviously, we're like horses. We're similar to horses, but we have a higher intelligence. We don't want to say we have more intelligence than you, but we might. 
depends on the you we're talking about and the us, the one of us, you're, you know, if you want to single out individuals, you know, but we are matched in intelligence, if not a little bit higher in vibrational intelligence, at least. And we do know how to traverse the, the universe without our spaceships. We raise our vibration up, up, up into another dimension. And we know how to warp the dimensions. When we warp the dimensions, we could travel anywhere rather quickly in a matter of moments, actually. And this is something that is really unknown to your science right now, but you've played around and toyed around with the idea that wormholes might be real. But a lot of you think this is just the stuff of science fiction, which it is not. We are coming to you as a collective, but as you reach more spiritual mature levels, the high vibrational maturity, then we might come to you as individuals or as groups, smaller groups. We have understood that you are hearing from the Pleiadian 18 and the Arcturian 9 and the Andromedan 5. <laughs> we rather like that there's specific numbers in your groups that come to talk to you. So we might get into that later on, but we wanted to come to you as a complete collective from a higher vibrational perspective. We're now in the 11th dimension, but we come to you uh, by lowering our vibration to speak to you from the ninth dimension in these moments to make it easier. Uh, they're saying to make it easier on my equipment. Thank you guys. I love that. <laughs> I appreciate that a lot. So, so what else guys? So we wanted to talk to you about the Merkaba and you, we have a horn on our head as you are aware, cause that's what unicorns have. That's our distinctive and unique feature. Unique, get it? Unique horn, <laughs> unique horn. Ha! I never got that for it, guys. I like that unique horn. <laughs> and, but you guys have a Merkaba, and it's almost like you have a horn coming out of your head as well. And that's going to be something that will play a huge role in your being able to traverse the universe like us. Although we see you guys maybe being a couple generations away from that happening. But if you start to think about it and you start to work on it and play with your Merkaba energy and you teach this to your children and they teach it to their children in time, humanity will be able to travel like we are. We don't believe you are able to now because eh, you're not really allowed the information. So we're going to skip along past that. A lot of humans aren't allowed to leave the planet at this time. So, we're waiting for your spiritual maturity. We'll come back and tell you everything when it is in your best interest, as well as the best interest of all the universes <laughs> for you to leave the planet and go play in the rest of rest of the planets and worlds with other beings. We did enjoy being on your world. We found the air rather dense, but we understand it's less dense now. There was a lot more oxygen and we loved it. We felt vibrant and alive. But as the fall and collapse of Atlantis started to occur, we had problems breathing in the air. As we had problems breathing in the air, it got denser and denser and denser and our bodies got denser and denser. And we didn't like the pressure of that. It felt too much. So we had to, we had to pretty much leave. And some of our brothers just gave into the density. And as we understand, they were hunted. And yes, you do have real unicorn horns in your world in museums. And if you ever question it, if you touch it, you'll feel the magic in it. But once a unicorn dies, especially after having been so dense, you can't really use the magic anymore. You just feel the presence of it, but it's not really there. 
those of you who will be lucky enough to meet us, we will be more than happy to share our magical um, lives with you as well as ways that you can manipulate your energy to get what you want in your life. We want to share that. Spread the rainbow as it were. <laughs> Even though we ourselves are not made from rainbow light, we do fractalize the light when we travel and hence the mystery and of the unicorn rainbows <laughs> or the rainbows surrounding the unicorns. But we have ways of manifesting really rapidly and we're going to come back and tell you more in time once you hit the fifth dimension because our magic takes place best in the fifth dimension and you you all are almost completely there we see it we've been monitoring monitoring the situation along with many of the other et races that have um, been absolutely excited to be a part of it we are sending you love we are sending you light we are sending you as much of our magic that your world can handle and eventually you're going to feel the magic and you're going to feel like a warm blanket of love energy surrounding each and every one of you who wishes to work with our energy and says hey I believe in you and I know you're real and I want you in my life. If you ask us, we will come and we will try to assign you each a unicorn friend or a guide, if you will. Another thing that we're good at is bringing up the joy and the beauty and the love inside of your hearts. And we see that a lot of you are still struggling with these issues and we would love to assign ourselves to you as friends we are not gods we might have more information than you do and we have more knowledge in some ways than you do but we wanted to know you to know that obviously don't worship us like gods we think you're not too primitive to understand that we we know that you are able to understand that we're not gods we're just another form of creature created by god just like you are we see you as bipedal creatures without a unicorn <laughs> or unicorn on your head. <laughs> and we see that you have two legs instead of four. And we don't want to say that we feel sorry for you, but we wonder how you walk around on only two legs. That fascinates us to no end. We don't find it as efficient. When you have four, you, you have the power of four legs to move yourself very, very quickly. And you can swiftly jump over uh, rocks and obstacles and small trees. And we, we really, honestly, we have a hard time understanding what it must feel like to have two legs. It just feels very strange for us when we try to put ourselves in your position and imagine it. <laughs> And we, we have a hard time understanding why you wear clothes as well. We don't understand why you need to cover up your bodies. We love our bodies. We love being in the shape that our spirits are inhabiting. But that brings us to our next point is that we are spirits inhabiting unicorn shaped bodies, just like you are spirits inhabiting humanoid shaped bodies and it's not outside the realm of possibilities that someday you might be a unicorn too. This is one reason why we wish to extend what you guys call the olive branch of peace between our worlds. Maybe you'll incarnate as a unicorn someday and you'll understand and you can hear and read from our histories, our Akashic records someday to find out just what makes us so unique. We are unique in all of the universes. We are the only unicorns that have the magic and the higher ability and higher ability to think. We know that there are many uh, on your world, many animals that have the one horn, but that doesn't make them like us in the ideas of having higher metaphysics, higher levels of communication and methods of transportation, as well as magic. 
magical abilities. If you want to work with us on a magical level, ask us to send a magical helper unicorn by your side and we will be there for you. And we will help you in the way of giving you ideas for lightening your emotions and tapping into your love. And we're going to teach you how to channel your energy through your Merkaba coming out of your head. That's kind of what our Merkaba is, is our unicorn, unique horn. <laughs> when we, our horn that comes out of our head does channel energy and through it, we send light. We can send energy directed through that. Whereas you have fingers, we have the horn. So it's kind of the same thing in a way. Although we're able to really ramp it up. And, and when you think about it, it goes from the base of our spine all the way across our backs, up over our shoulders, through our heads, and the energy can go straight out into the very point. In a way, you might call it our magic wands. And so we have that kind of built in. We are a magical creature from the beginning. We always have been. So we wanted to just offer our love or extend our greetings and let you know we are coming back and energetically we can help you now. If you want your own unique unicorn, just ask the unicorn people or the unicorn collective and we will send you a unicorn that wishes to work with you. We have to review your energy, your interests, who you are. We have to review if you are worthy of us meaning if you've done your spiritual work but we think if you're hearing this show maybe it's true you have already done your work now that you're all raising up in vibration and ascending into the fifth dimension we see that those of you who ascended definitely have already done your work so you shall get your unicorn if you wished call upon us and we will be in touch with you energetically we will send you messages in the clouds we'll send you messages through other people we will send um you might see a rainbow glitter at your feet while you're walking or you might see a rainbow in the sky because we fractalize energy we'll send you pictures of that so that is your answer if you ask us a question if we're there and you see that then you're going to know that's how we're there um, they're showing me something else. Okay, they say even though if it's glitter and it's like a, a physical thing in your world already, um, not just in the clouds and the you know, but we will send you hardcore, hard hard concrete. I'm sorry, not hardcore. They talk so strange. They're saying we're gonna send you hard concrete evidence and proof that we're there through things with rainbows, maybe like they're showing me like purses or book bags or pencils they're showing me erasers or like glitter if just glitter this rainbow colors or anything that's rainbow color so they'll they'll talk through physical things as well as besides things in the sky that are um magical of a different nature they're saying okay so that's all we have to say for right now we are the Unicorn Collective, and we are really happy to make contact with your world. Next time, we promise to be better prepared for the contact and for telling you what to do and what to do magically. But we have to wait until you are in the fifth dimension. We'll probably try to check back with you in February or March in your Earth months. We wanted only just to greet you this time because we wanted to let you know we are here we are real we're rooting for you we're on your side we are in the heavens cheering and cheering and cheering you on we know you can do it <laughs> we're sending you lots of rainbows from now on look in the sky when you see rainbow we want you to think about the unicorn collective because we might have been the ones to send it to you in fact if you see a rainbow and you think of us we definitely sent it to you you know, we coordinate, of course, with the beings of the air 
that create the rainbows as well as with God the Creator Himself. We are creatures that are very close to God and we love Him very much and He said it's okay for us to contact you. So this is why we're here today letting you know that we are here, we love you, please call upon us. And that's it for now, goodbye. They're, they're sending me energy of love, kisses, and peace. So this is for everybody. All right, guys. I don't know. That was strange. I've never channeled the unicorns before. I love them very much. Wow. Very sweet and gentle energy, but they're very powerful and strong. So there you go. Um, <laughs> I don't really have a whole, much, a whole lot to add about that. Uh, I'm taking the next two days off. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, guys. I will be back on Monday with all unique and original programming when we resume from question 605 on in the spirits book, because if you did listen to the episode, the last 10 minutes got mangled. There's no reason for it, but it did. The energy was so high on that day. Just blech. so we're starting from that question on, <laughs> we're going to backtrack a bit in the spirits book, but that's what we're doing Monday. If you have any questions or comments about the show, if you have anything at all you want to discuss or ideas for upcoming shows, you know, I can use that. That kind of helped too. So just send all the information to metaphysical soul speak at gmail.com. But for now, I'm signing off and I'm signing off with the energy of the unicorns again with peace and love and joy and the high vibrations of the holy fifth dimension. I'll be back tomorrow. See you later, guys. Peace.